played. <laughs> there was a lot of goading going on. No, just say goading as many times <laughs> as you can during this. Yeah. <laughs> Smith, Commander Smith, does whatever a smith can. Makes a deck a hundred size, casts a spell just like you guys. Look out, here comes the Commander Smith. Yeah! High five! Here we go. That's, uh, that song was in desperation. Yeah. A uh, little background oh, yeah, to that notes. is we, we tried, Besh. We tried to do your song. We might do it again. Yeah. Or give it a try, try yeah. but we'll have to... Tweak it. So the plan was we were going to both do a joint song with that, and then we were like, oh, man, we have to do some changes. We are going to be able to if do it. If you don't know, that was the Spider-Man theme song yeah. from way back ago. No, like, it's our new theme song for our show. Actually, it sounds good in my mind. Yeah. It, we did a uh, second take because I screwed it up the first time. Jesus. Uh, welcome to Commander Smith. We are the Commander Smiths. I am Adam Smith. And I'm Lowry Smith. Don't worry. We're cousins. Hey, we, have, we might sound a little different or sound a lot crisper or whatever we have new equipment we're working out the tweaks right now but uh i think it looks good oh that's what i wanted to show off okay now put the headphones on Uh uh-huh so we have pre-made buttons in here so i'm going to play them really quick (laughs) (laughs) i can't hear any of this yeah we only have one headphone so we didn't come from yeah i'm just gonna play those quick and then the, my favorite one. Is oh, that. good oh, for you. Oh, good for you. <laughs> yeah, so up favorite. until we get uh, our headphones, both of us headphones working, then we can start playing with the buttons. No, I think you can still press the buttons and I can have no reaction. <laughs> no idea. I'm just going to. I think so. You're like, why is that blue light going on? <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> but uh, this is all, again, uh, posted on Twitter. We posted on Twitter that this, thanks to you guys for the this. patrons. Yeah, because the only way we're able yeah. to get this is from you guys. Uh, much upgraded equipment on this. So it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sweet stuff. <laughs> Uh, now let's get into what are we talking about today, Larry? I moved, uh, I moved the sheet away. Yeah, <laughs> it, you, I moved it away. You yelled at me. I moved it all away. Okay, uh, so we got more stuff on the desk. We're not still got to orient that. Yeah. Uh, so first off, we are going to have a episode ninety-five. Yep. There we go. That is the first thing <laughs> yeah. we're going to have. I was like, okay, we it's didn't an episode, see an episode ninety-five. Yet. Uh, but we're gonna go fave fives, uh, sorceries. Woo. Woo, indeed. I actually, I have, a, I like my list of my sorceries. Uh, it's not as long as like I don't know yours but. as uh, the instants and sorcery or instants and sorcery, instants <laughs> and artifacts and stuff like that. But I was able to, I like my five that I picked out. Nice. Uh, and then, so Mark Rosewater, who's the head of magic, essentially, uh, he kind of posted a Sweet Sixteen style bracket for changes to Commander. Uh, none of them are legitimate. He's not part of anything that makes rules for commander, but just a fun little idea. Yeah. And, um, but it's, it's, it kind of lends a little bit of credence to these are things that you could play around with mm-hmm. in Which, our mind. A couple of them we have tweaked a little bit where yeah. we'll talk about that when we get down the list. And so we're not going to say who wins out in the bracket. We just want to talk about the ideas that are presented in the bracket. Yeah. And maybe there's some that we might try out in our play group that we change a little bit. We kind of t- sure. talked a little bit beforehand, but when we get to that point, we'll talk about it more. Uh, and then we kind of finish off with spoilers that were this past week. A couple cards, not all of them. We're just going to talk about the main cards and also that will kind of lead our way into Smith Specs of the Week. Kind of. It's back, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> well, it's not like we're we're not going to do, uh, you know, it, it's just we have a couple cards we wanted to talk about. Uh, a couple of our listeners tweeted about the dollar to duels thing. So kind of wanted to mention those things as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Um, that's what the episode's about, but... What else is happening? You guys can check us out on Twitter. <laughs> As we've mentioned already before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's a good way to communicate with us at this point because we've become competent. Yeah, we both have There was a lot of tweeting this week. It was yeah, kind of fun. We did good. Yeah. So that's where you can also see Proxy of the Week. This last week I did a revamped Attraxa. Attraxa was one of my first <laughs> proxies that I made. And it, it's pretty similar to the original one. It's probably a little bit more... Uh, zoomed in than I had before, and mm. it's a lot more crisper than I did. And then I changed the color. Actually, crisper? A, you like that word today. I guess. Did I use it already? <laughs> you used it for how our sound oh, was. Oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's the word of the day. <laughs> clap, clap. It's the word of the day. <laughs> Not the letter from Sesame Street. Come on. I, we, we don't watch Sesame Street yet. You guys don't watch Sesame Street yet? No. Um, but yeah, so I actually did like a little voting thing. It's our first voting thing that we've done on Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
So it was to, the, you could see the old version and the new version and which one you like Who better. Won? Uh, right now it was like 90% was towards the new version. I think there was, but you're, you're saying like it's nine to one. Yeah. It's no, actually, okay. it was 10 votes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what it was. I only, I checked it like a couple days ago, so it's probably updated since then. Uh, and then was there anything else? That we um, I am probably going to start. Uh, not sharing with Adam again because uh, oh, I'm starting to get some backstock on my beer. I clicked a button and it probably went over oh, the shit. top of you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you were you haven't had a not sharing with Adam for a little bit. Yeah, I'm, again, I'm still detoxing from Florida. Yeah, I was just I did a not sharing with Adam sharing with Adam. You did, and I actually got Mujus. <laughs> yeah, the tweeted out, which is kind of cool. But uh, I'm sure they were confused at yeah, the hashtag. Like, Who the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> what is he talking about? Is, why is he Smith? not? Why is he not sharing with himself? It probably like, took like a day for them to actually tweet it because they're like, "Do we really want to tweet this out?" <laughs> everybody's <laughs> everybody's on. Uh, is being really careful because of the Netflix thing last week. Yeah, right. I mean, is this sexual? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and then you guys could check us out uh, on YouTube. That's the free way to subscribe to us. Uh, like we talked about before, Patreon is the way you guys can give us, donate money to us, and that's how we can get new equipment like we have now. Uh, and then email is where you can send us song suggestions, uh, A&L questions. Uh, we won't have an A&L question this week because specs are kind of taking over yep. that spot. Uh, but that's where you can go on there and send us some of your questions. We do have a couple of them built up, which next week's might work out perfect for that because we have a Christmas idea with one of them. Christmas time. And then, too. Lowry, what do you got going on this week? I th haven't confirmed this yet, but I oh. think I'm going to be on Command Tower officially. Oh, good, There's no for, good you. for you. It's uh, an actual you button. No good for you. <laughs> I wish I had headphones so you could hear that I was just <laughs> mocking you. <No. laughs> But yeah. I, I haven't actually confirmed it. They're actually down. Uh, the at least two of the three are down in uh, Oklahoma for the command. No, DC. DC. No, they're in. There was no, they're in, in Oklahoma. DC. Wasn't there another thing in DC? Too? Maybe they're not at command command fest, but they're just at a magic fest. Magic related. Clearly, we're good friends. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I believe it's going to be the Action Four News. Uh, I'll be on that, and then a few weeks after. I'll oh, it's a the, few weeks after for the other for part. for the deck list. Ah, uh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So okay, cool. So CMD Tower, those uh, those guys are awesome, and I can't wait yeah, to hear you fun. on there. <laughs> Whew! <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we get into this week's actual episode? So our fave fives sorceries. Uh, I did number mine one to five. I also did. Uh, Without numbers, but I put them in an order. I actually Is don't know okay? what ones you would pick. I was trying it's to go through and be like. What what stuff do I think Lowry will have on there? But we'll just go through it. Um, I guess I'll start off because typically you start off a lot of times, so I'll I'll jump because in. Because normally you don't want me to spoil your number one. Yeah, exactly, because <laughs> you're going to give it away. Uh, I, I actually don't know many of yours either. Well, so my first two are going to be ones that are brand new that haven't made it in decks yet because I haven't built a new deck for a couple months How's now. How's your favorite then? What? How is it your Because it's going to be in every single okay. freaking one of my right. decks. Uh, well, I'll tell you, two of them that didn't make it, that probably would have taken the place, was Triumph of the Hordes, which goes into like Ugh. one of my game killers. But sure. that's not yeah, yeah. that's not on the list that got taken out by this card. In directly, actually, probably, final uh, Finale of Devastation. I love Yeah, I mean, that that's card. good. That's good. And is that your number five? That's my number five. Okay, that's your number five. Yeah, so yeah, that's I would legit. think Triumph of the Hordes... It, not necessarily got taken, like I'm not going to put that in decks, but this is a good replacement for that or to be. Well, in the it's deck like a tutor well. and a pump. Yeah. And you that don't have good. to necessarily have the crater hoof, which most of the time you will have the crater hoof to make the game. I mean, winner. if you're planning on it, <laughs> that's, it, that's what you go do. But yeah, so and I know that's kind of cheating. It's a faith, but I know every green deck from this point on is going to have that in it. And so I was like, well, this card I've been, if when I've drawn up my decks, Mm -hmm. You know, the ones that I haven't finished yet. <laughs> it's in every single green one that I have going. Yeah, so it's a sweet card. I, yeah. I can definitely see this uh being used a ton. Yeah. But so. if if I had to use one, if I if I have to do one that I haven't that I have been using that's actually indexed, then Triumph of the Hordes would be that five spot. Okay. So that's I got you. Flip flop is there. So it's, same with my number four. Six, we'll have you a got a fave six, which is no, 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 no. Awful I'm alliteration. Just saying, I'm just saying that it's <laughs> and actually my number four will It'll coincide with the other one, too. Okay. So the one that's in and one that's out. So, all right. What's your number five? My number five is going to be Marshall Coup, which is 
white white X. If X is oh, yeah, six or right. more, you get uh, to have one destroy one all creatures, and then you get to put one one creatures. I mean, yeah, X one one creatures. That into is play. a pretty sweet board wipe. I like that card. So yeah, I like the board wipe. It gives you a presence right after it. Um, like I've really enjoyed this card in like Gahiji, mm-hmm. and just like you're plopping down at least like probably seven to eight one ones. Then the next turn you replay Gahiji and attack for three times whatever you had. Yeah. Like it's it can be a really powerhouse. And just if it's it's really good in like token decks and um it just I always really, really like it. So Yeah, I dig that card. I do tend to put that in decks as well. Probably not yeah. as many as you, but <laughs> uh mine kinda so I'll I'll do the card that would have been in this spot, but I have well my number four is uh, Winds of Abandon. So we've talked about that card a bunch. It's a great... So it's kind of what you're talking about there, except that this is an exile effect. I do like the destroy, but the exile gets around those indestructibles yeah. and all that stuff. Winds of Abandon, any white deck that I'm going to have, is it's going to be in there because it's six to completely get rid of the board. Uh, and yeah, you're giving them land, but you get to keep all your creatures. So it's one-sided with it all. Yeah, I mean, like... I agree with that. That's a card that is really good in any deck. But then if you have like a sliver hive Lord in your play group, that just has gives all their slivers indestructible, indestructible. and it just, it's a powerhouse there yeah. for sure. The the one that I was kind of saying that was in the other spot was curse of the swine. That one's an yeah. exile effect. It's the two blue and X and then you get to pay whatever five, four, whatever number you pay, you just exile, exile that many creatures and then they get a two, two bore in play. So kind of goes like similar yeah. cause they're both exile effects. I want to be able mm-hmm. to get rid of it. Any threat that's out there. Uh, the nice thing about winds of abandon though, is that if they have hex proof or shroud, it gets around that cause it's just yep. wiping the board. That's Whereas curse of the swine, you actually have to target it. So it's a little but, bit. And even if you're in a pinch with winds of abandon, you can just pay the two to and exile a creature. One. Yeah. So, that's not bad either. Yeah. And six is not that bad for Commander to no. really once. And if you're late game and everybody's hands are pretty small, yeah, go ahead and give yourself 10 land. Who cares? Because yeah. you already have enough man- mana to... God, man, this just keeps... It's, <laughs> it's only been it so like... so much in all the time and everybody says mana and it's starting to make me change. It's, into, it's taken uh, two years uh, to get you to start no. messing up on it. But yeah. So, okay. What's your number four? Um... That a uh, uh, fiery confluence. That's two red, two colorless for clearly a sorcery, uh, and it is choose three, and it can be multiple times. It's destroy an artifact, deal one damage to each creature or two damage to each opponent. Mm-hmm. And so, like you can, if you want to double up, you can triple destroy artifacts or deal three damage to all creatures or six damage to all opponents. And then you can mix you and match like those, those confluences. I the love the here. confluences. <laughs> They're really actually, I just like the red and blue one. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. White, white, black, and green are a little over costed. I don't even um, remember what those ones do. Mm. Do you remember off the top of your head? Uh, the white one will exile an enchantment, uh, give you a token or gain you fine lot five life. Uh, black one would, like draws you a card, gives a creature minus one, minus one, and then oh, actually that one's that one's expensive else. though. That's the black col- one. Oh no, I'm thinking collective. Nah. Uh, mm, brutal. No, we're not. Yeah, and green one does like one one counters land and returning something to your hand from your graveyard, something like that. Mm. But they're just like overcosted. Mm. Um, but confluence is just or it is nice to have different options and being able to choose different things and just being able to have it like i i just love the confluences in like a riku deck or anything that's Mm -hmm. doubling spells or just you're getting so much uh ability out of like put that in a niv mizzet prune deck or anything you're just getting so much value off of that so i like value yep well in commander having also the i really like the options is my favorite part of that is and that's what you need. Like some situations, this option works better than others and others. This is perfect. You know, like that. I like your picks with the confluences. Cause that is perfect for commander stuff. Uh, my number three, and I played this one for years and years, even when we used to play 60 card decks, but mm-hmm. it's a uh, Genesis wave. Ooh. Yeah. I love that card. It can, it, it, and I like the, the randomness, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. And it's just like, maybe it turns the tide more often than not. If it's late game and you're tapping 10, 11, 12, <sighs> you're just getting so much value out of that. Mm-hmm. And it, 
has won me the game more often than not when I play that it's, card. And they've made some different variations on that card that just aren't even close you know, to as good. Well, because you have what the Hydra that gets you one card. <clears throat> sure, Genesis Hydra. Yeah. I mean, that's not that bad. It's not bad. You, you, you get, get a body get, with it, but, but being able to do every single card. So oh, I guess I should say, what but you Genesis have you have one that does. goes with like artifacts, yeah, and instant sorceries, and you're just like, but it doesn't hit land, yeah, and yeah, yeah. So with, Genesis wave what it is it's three green and x and then whatever x is so if you pay 10 x you reveal the top 10 cards of your library so it's whatever your x is number 10 and then everything uh any permanent with 10 or less casting costs comes into play yeah so i think they regret as well i I think they regret the wording on that (laughs) like it should like because again they there's uh a red blue one that does instant sorceries Mm. they probably would have just wanted to do just non-land creatures permanents. for the green oh yeah but or, or even non-land permanent that's cheating in like artifacts and enchantments yeah. and planeswalkers and you're just like holy man this just hits so much in a deck that doesn't you know that just ha- runs a bunch of permanents yeah so that's a card that i'll hold in my hand till mid late game and play that it normally it's when things aren't looking good for the rest of the board everybody like there's one person that's about to win and i pull that out and it's like well never mind the tides have turned now i'm the arch enemy <laughs> everybody's coming after me at this point but it's such a it's such a good card and i don't see it played enough with anybody else but i like playing that card a lot i can yeah i can see that i don't play it a ton yeah i would have i mean it's something that would have went in my nikia deck because mm-hmm. there's so many oh, permanents yeah. but there's been cre- everything that would have been <laughs> all your 10 cas would have just been like everything everything <laughs> but i mean uh number three for lowry windfall yeah i i had looked at that card yeah. too uh so this is blue two colorless everybody discards their hands and whoever had the highest uh hand total everybody draws that many yeah that's such a good card mm. uh you put it in some nice decks i mean you put it in a, a nekasar deck that that can do some brutal damage to yeah, everybody because everybody's drawing so many cards the the hands are going to be full and then they're drawing a full grip yeah um, or I think, if you're even playing in a deck where you're playing a lot of stuff and your hand is very small, well, hey, yeah, player across Trombley has six cards. All right, well, I have three, everybody discard, and I get to draw six cards now. It's a six card three drop, and that's that's exactly how I like playing it. Like it's just it's pay three, draw six cards, mm-hmm. and you're you should only have maybe one other card in your hand. Like if you're running like an artifact deck and you're just like boom, 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 boom. Next turn, windfall, boom, boom. You're like, you're just getting so much advantage off of that. Now, one I will say that isn't on my list that I had looked at that I do tend to put in some decks, but I didn't put it in there because I was like, ah, this is a really expensive card, but Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, yeah. And actually, that was the initial one I had. Yeah, and I was like, just like, eh. I, I only have one proxy. I don't play with the real one because it's over 100 bucks. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I don't use it. So I, I don't have like an affinity towards it. If, if uh, you want an expensive card, <clears throat> a really sweet card, wheel of fortune is awesome. Cause it's one red two, and everybody discard and you draw seven. Everybody draws seven. So you're, no matter what getting seven with that. But I, I almost like, uh, winds of abandon winds of, why am I doing that? <laughs> winds of change <laughs> winds of change better because winds of abandons on my list <laughs> uh, I almost like that better. Cause it can fit into some different decks. Like you're, you're using that like, I guess with my Nekasar, I'm trying to draw a ton of cards. A mm-hmm. lot of times I have no maximum hand size. And the point of that is to play that to kill everybody else, you know? Well, when's it change? Not everybody's drawing as many as you have though. Like you, they're drawing as many. No, as no, they no, have, no, no, no. Your but, card. Oh, no, windfall. Sorry. Windfall. Okay. <laughs> Brain fart. Windfall. I, you can abuse that better. That's I like yeah, windfall yeah. better more times than I like uh wheel of fortune because you I can draw more trying, than seven. Yeah, exactly. You're trying. I normally when I have it in a deck, I'm trying to kill somebody by using that card. Because mm-hmm. there's another. Uh, what's the wizard that does the same thing? That goes in those. A lot Chase's of those uh, librarian, or yeah, something like that, yeah. where it's tap one and tap it, and then do the exact same effect. Those two in the decks like that are freaking amazing. Number two, uh, disrupt decorum. That's a good one. Card. That was a good one. And we've been seeing this a lot more with all the goading. The last time we played, mm-hmm. there was a lot of goading going on. <laughs> it, sounds, <laughs> it's, it sounds so dirty. No, just say goading as many times as you can during this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I got to get an oh, yeah button on you there. You probably should, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's just 
I know this isn't a game winner, or I think we had that in our game. We winner did have list it as a game in our winner, top yeah. red list. I just love using this card. It goes in so many decks. Anytime I have red, I'm putting this in there. It doesn't even have to fit the theme. It just fucks shit up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just one turn of everybody having to attack each other and not you, you know, you get away with nobody killing you. Or a turn, and then you can potentially go and kill, kill somebody. There's one, creatures yeah. dying all over the place. It's a it's a pretty effective chaos card. Mm -hmm. Chaos. Uh, chaos. That's like a Lowry. You like chaos. I don't, you don't do chaos as much anymore, but you used to love chaos cards. <laughs> you can, you can use plenty of cards that create chaos. I still like having people go, what are you doing? <laughs> well, your favorite, or why are you doing? We've that? talked about multiple times is the chaos, uh, warp. Is it sure? Yeah, chaos just, warp. <laughs> and you get screwed over more times than not, <laughs> but you more the effect, odds. Odds are the odds are not against in your favor. me on that one. <laughs> and I still love it because it is, it's fun. Yeah. But the randomness and see what happens is pretty sweet. <laughs> so yeah, no disrupt decorum is a, a really sweet card. All right. You're sure. number two. Um, hey, my number two, two is going to be, uh, you, we should get that yeah, as a that button, button too. I should start writing these down. Yeah. Uh, so Chandra's ignition, that's two red, three colorless target creature. You control deals the amount of damage of its power to each creature and each opponent. So it's kind of like a wrath, but like this, this card's sweet in feather because you're targeting. Yeah, that's any where card. I saw it recently. Is your and then, feather deck? And then, but I've had it in others, so like I have it in my Lycia deck. Mm -hmm. And the the great thing about it is, it's that creature is dealing the damage. Mm. So if it so has, you have death if, touch on it, or if you have life link on it, you can get all the bonuses, killing from, all of the creatures, or mm -hmm. gaining all of the life. Mm -hmm. Or if it's a big creature, like I've had a fifteen fifteen deal fifteen damage to each uh, opponent, yeah, that's and kill the creatures. Um, so you can you can do some sweet tricks with poison. It. Yeah, hitting people oh, yeah. for poison with that. Yeah, I hate thinking like that. But <laughs> uh, I mean, these are these are really cool things. It's like if that creature gets enraged a bonus, would be awesome with that. Yeah, put it on any enraged creature, like the drawing one or getting the land the, the raptors. Well, because it's, it's not so like Is you have to do it on something that hits those enraged creatures. Okay, wait. So, so you put it on your creature. You you target your creature. Yep. And it affects and it, all other creatures on board, not it. Oh, okay. It doesn't get it. Yeah. Oh, dang it. I was yeah, hoping yeah. he would get the damage, too. I was like, holy <laughs> crap, you're just drawing a shit But ton. you can still, like, you know, with Enrage, you... On your stuff, because it does it to yours as well. Yeah, correct. So if you're playing an Enrage deck and you pick one creature, all your Enrage triggers are going to happen mm -hmm. at that point. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. So, yeah, I, I like the Wrath effect as well that it can mm -hmm. do. It's And it's still burning your opponent's... Uh, it can do a lot of work. Oh, hang on. I'm going to see if I can get this right. So drum roll. No, no, that's applause. That's uh, the horn. Of, that's really bad. Do, 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 do. Oh, that was actually, that's not our drum roll. That was, <laughs> that was a, a <laughs> joke one. <laughs> Whoops. Adam's well, number okay, one is a joke. Here goes my number one. <laughs> all right. Sorry. This episode is just going to be all buttons. Uh, so my number one is, can you, you guess? Uh, oh, Jesus. Don't look at it. I can't. I can't see. I'm like, <laughs> I'm a bat. I can't. Um. I mean, when you say it, I'm sure gonna be like, yeah, it's a black card. Oh, um, torment of hellfire. Yeah, there we go. Torment yeah. of hellfire. This card. I have that was on my list as well. Was it? It's yeah. not your number one though, no, right? No, it isn't. Damn it! I was hoping I'd take your number one nope. away. Ouch. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this card can wreck havoc and it goes it's gone like in game every single deck for sure. every single deck that i have black in is boom it's in there it doesn't matter what it's doing it doesn't have to fit in theme this just can be played at middle end of the game and you just can wipe the board uh i haven't won the game with it per se oh you, you killed me with cigar yeah, never yeah, mind yeah. Yeah, I, when I had cigar out i couldn't sacrifice yeah, anything that's a good just point. so i did drill the game but i have uh evened out the board or gotten a you know eventually winning with it yeah but, the card Such itself a, didn't win at that point, but it gives me the win eventually. So this card is just amazing. If you guys don't have this card, yeah. I would definitely get this in your your toolbox for cards because it's just awesome. See, like the the funny thing is, is like I, I see like those XX cards every once in a while. Mm -hmm. You're just like, oh, that made this card really bad. That would still be really good on yeah, this card. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? 
It wouldn't be the powerhouse that it is. No, you would have to change. Something if you went else, like, if not give them an option to discard, you know, take no, one of the options be, away. Think, think about how different it would be if you went like black XX mm-hmm. and you pay. You know, you still put like ten into it, so everybody's either five. discarding or five or or yeah, having it affect five times. Yeah. Like that's still a huge swing. Again, it wouldn't be the game. That, like the backbreaker that it is probably what it wouldn't be my number one but no being number one it'd with still be solid just one x in there just freaking oh yeah it can yeah. kill so i kind of wish that they took the damage part off of it being able to instead like of it, taking three life i mean even if you're just like basically wiping the board for everybody but then it would be just more of a board wipe i like that it has the the multiple parts to it where it's like, all yeah. right, you get to make the decision. Do you want to lose three life? And that's what happens is they go, okay, well I'll lose six life for two of the triggers and then I'll get rid of these permanents and I'll discard these cards. Or if they mm-hmm. don't have, you know, like it's kind of cool to see everybody try to weigh out what's most important <laughs> at that point of the game, you know? Yeah. Uh, Cause I like, being able to see different decisions with it. It's not just straightforward. Everybody, your creatures are gone. It's like, all right, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? So I think it's a really cool card. All Agreed. right, let me give you a drum roll. <laughs> oh, wait, was that the drum roll? Yeah, that was the drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> What's your number one, Lowry? Uh, it's going to be Life from the Loam. Ah. Green colorless. Uh, when you cast it, you get to bring back three land cards from your graveyard into your hand. Mm-hmm. And then it has dredge three. So if you draw a card, you can put that into your hand and put the top three of your library into your graveyard. Um, I just love this card. That's why it, you're more of an advocate of the uh, secret layer of that. Yeah. Yeah. See, I was like mediocre on that. And you were more. And that's why. Because this is one of your favorite cards. It's some really fun tricks. And it gives you that consistency. Like, you know, Crucible of Worlds... It's very similar. They go in in very similar decks, and they're mm-hmm. doing the same thing, giving you that consistency on your fetches. But there are some things like the card goes amazing in like Gitrog, Lord Windgrace, uh, any anything that's putting lands into your graveyard, and you're just getting that uh, just that advantage. And also, like for some reason, I just have this affinity that it combos with uh, Raven's Crime. I don't know that one. Uh, it's just black sorcery target player. Any player discards a card, and then you can discard a land, pay a black, recast the card oh. from your graveyard. And so you just like bring three lands back into your hand, go discard a land, pay one black, you discard a card, and you can just like Continue machine gun yeah. people's hands. Um, well, I think the reason why you really like this card too is you play with so many fetches, as we learned from. Yeah, I like the five, the and generally you're always, I always have at least one. Mm-hmm. And then when you start dredging, um, that works out for you as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. So one thing that, that kind of triggered with me, cause I just thought about the secret, we, we should kind of talk about the, the stuff from secret layer really quick. Oh, we could do that. Yeah. Yeah. So you ordered two, I, I did two of kaleidoscope, two. Yep. kaleidoscope killers. You didn't get the bitter blossoms, right? No, I didn't. Um, and then I actually ordered 10 of the kaleidoscope, uh, kaleidoscope killers. killers. I think we talked, yeah, we did. Laura is the one that kind of talked about it when we were first were talking about the secret layer stuff is the planeswalkers were starting or the stained glass stained planes glass planeswalkers Walker were showing up. Now, what I was hearing was that I think kaleidoscope killers had the, a better chance of getting the better ones, you know, really? to fear seems odd. And cause it went with like the package of what you're, what you're getting. Cause I didn't see, you didn't get uh, a Johnny, right? Nope. And when you looked at the, the first stuff started that coming like started coming out after the first wave. So it wasn't like a lot of them were Johnny and all that. No. And there were, and I went, I went on TCG today or yesterday to kind of figure out which ones I wanted because I still want Jace because I don't have a Jace besides our foil sheets we got. Yeah. I want to actually own a hard copy of that uh, just for proxy wise Mm -hmm. and all that collection wise, I should say Um, they only have 15 of them. So they didn't, they didn't send out all 30, what, how many were there? 32 planeswalkers in War of the Spark. Hmm. So what that, and that, that's only on TCG. So I just went on TCG, did secret layer and just looked at what they had for sale. There's only 15 planeswalkers that are up there. So that okay. means there's more to come. And I think that's been speculated on, I, I think actually, I was just listening to Fast Finance thinks that they might have more. That's just speculation on their end, but mm. with them only having fifteen of the stained glass, and you know that their other ones are made as well, they've got to have something else. That's yeah, coming. I mean, but they kind of blew their load on this, right? They put 
Nicopolis and Tafiri. Yeah. That, and I was are, also thinking that. I'm like, what do you have left? You have the... I guess the Liliana, Dreadhorde leader. Oh, yeah. So there's that. That could be really cool. Um, You have the wolf one. Because <laughs> that one wasn't woo. in. <laughs> Who else was good in there? Because Jace was in this one. Um, Angrath was in this one. <clears throat> I'm just trying to think of some of the did ones. Did you see Narset at all? Narset and Ashiok I, would be sweet. I did see Narset in there, and I, Black Blade was in there, so Gideon was in there. Okay. Uh, who else did we have? Do you, did, do you remember Ashiok on there for the Uncommons? Ashiok was on there. Okay. Um, Those are like the ones I like. Oh, oh wait, wait, Narset. No, they didn't have Narset. Okay, so no, that would be a legitimate the Healy, one. Healy, the, the red, red, blue red one? And white one. Oh, that red, blue. Or not Healy, isn't it? Sahili is red, blue. No, it's Nahi- the Nahiri. Oh, Nahiri. The white red Yeah, that gal. one's bad. Yeah, she's in this. But yes, you're right. Uh, Narset is not. I did not see her in here. Uh, so that's probably in the round two will be Narset. With, and um, yeah, that's, that's and interesting. Liliana is the okay, two so, big guys. So anyways, I got... It, it wasn't as random. So kind of long story longer. It depended on the package you got. So I wasn't seeing any earlier in the week when I was kind of looking to see what cards were potentially there. I wasn't seeing any nickel boluses. I wasn't seeing any, um, there was like one or two for sale on eBay of nickel bolus or to mm-hmm. But now there's a ton because it came through with kaleidoscope killers. Gotcha. And the non randomness is I got three to one nickel bolus, two Tamios, two, what was the other dude? I got one Domri. <laughs> Were you? Yeah. <laughs> and then I got, or it might have been two Domri. I like Domri. Two Domri's and then two of the one that you got. Soren? The other one. Uh, Rail. Zero. Rail. So I got two Rails as well. So I'm, I'm happy with the three to Furies because those sure. sold instantly. I sold those for 85 bucks. So that was such a good value for all that stuff. And then the, I have the, the Overlord right now. Sliver Overlord is. I think I'm Selling. almost sold out. So people are picking them up for 20 bucks. So it ended up paying for itself. I probably will end up making, I think it calculated out with fees and everything with the 10 of them uh, around 100, 200 bucks off of it. And then mm-hmm. I get to keep a copy of Tafiri, keep a copy of, I didn't have Nicol Bolas or Tafiri. So those were the two yeah. I really wanted out of it. Cool. And Jace, I want Jace, but you have, you have Jace, don't you? You mean like in general? The Jace from... Or the spark. I mean, yeah, I have a regular version. Yeah. 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 I don't even have a regular, but he's 25 bucks for stained glass. Yeah. It, probably, well, probably what it kind of triggered for me though, is like, I like the stained glass and I kind of want the full set of oh, Jesus. <laughs> Some of them you get pretty damn cheap though for stained glass. There's a couple of them that are going for four or five bucks. Cause they're bad. Yeah. But they All look right. sweet. <laughs> All right. Should we move into the, the next segment with the, was there anything you want to say? All the stained glass stuff. Nah, we good. Were you happy with it? I like it. I'm yeah, I'm happy with it. Added a little bit more value. Um, I'm happy with my two. I kind of want to build with the kaleidoscope killers. Mm. You didn't. I I mentioned that and you said nothing about it. Well, the, actually, I was confused text. because the text you had mentioned. I got uh, Soren and Ralph Ralph Eric. Ralph Eric. He said, "I kind of want to build with these," and I'm like. We don't, just, we don't build with the planeswalkers. Yeah, right. so that's right. why I didn't respond to you. This is like, why this is why Adam and me have communication <laughs> issues. Because <laughs> I was like, I don't... Okay. I mean, I we did that, no, that I me- one No, I meant the yeah. kaleidoscope killers. <laughs> that's what I, I kind of want to build Ur-Dragon. Yeah? I don't want to do slivers. I don't either. But now I have like the sliver overlord and what was the sliver from uh, Modern Horizons? The Cascade one? Yeah. Uh, that's the, the one last. I would build with. If I was going to build, it'd be the Cascade because in the, the randomness that I like so much. But it's also Slivers, so <laughs> I probably won't slivers. build with it. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Let's move into possible changes to Commander. That Not really. Aren't really, happen. no. <laughs> <laughs> Clickbait. Click oh, you know title. what? I should use... Oh, I don't know if that sounder <laughs> works. <laughs> Will you cut any of the, these sounders that's that a really don't long work? sounder. Oh, that's the drum. Oh, oh good open for you. For you. Oh, there. There's one that does the like. There it is. Okay, that's going into the next segment. Is that the Our, memory one? This is yeah, the memory is one. <laughs> All right. So, 
we just want to talk through some of this kind of cool s- stuff that you could play around. I think in, in your own play group, if you got to study one, you could talk about this and see if you could yeah, for sure. adjust anything. That's the cool thing about Commander. Yeah. You don't have to follow the rules. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, you can do whatever you want. But these are kind of interesting that if they, we're going to kind of talk about if they will get changed, like if that's even a possibility, I think we can kind of discuss that. Sure. Ones that are more doable than others, you know. Uh, I want to get into this. <laughs> well, we're just going to go in order down the list of what they had. I'll make sure that I will try and get a link to the the board. If not, Rose I Water can Jay. send the uh, picture or we can. Yeah, we could probably we do that, too. that picture. OK, so the first one, uh, change hybrid mana rules. So what they're kind of saying here is that uh, you have your hybrid mana. Let's say it's red, red, green or something like that. You have to play your deck is going to be red or green, you know, or it can't f- that card can't fit in a deck that's just green or it can't fit in a deck that's just red. What they're yeah. trying to say here is you could could. Yeah. Uh, I would be fine with that. Yeah, I would too. Yeah, I, I like the idea. I think it add a little bit more variety. Mm hmm. Um, and also there's potential, like I didn't sit down and break down cards, but I think there's potential to plug holes for, uh, like a mono black might be able to have like a black red card that deals with enchantment. That's Mm -hmm. not right. Black white card that would deal with enchantments. And so you could slide that in potentially to a mono black deck. Yeah. And just, I mean, there's not going to be a bunch, but it could really help those mono colored decks. I think now would you still go with the idea of. Uh, what is it? Soul flare that gal that's white, but then in her tap symbols, it's red and blue. So her identity color is three of them. Or would you give sure. the option of it? Just you could do a mono white deck. No, no, no. Because I would. I mean, you could you, still you just for sure do gotta do white. Yeah, <laughs> never mind. What? Scratch what I just said. Huh? Well, you you could do whatever you want. If she's white and you don't want to use the abilities of her, you could just have her in a white deck. But she no, you can't. can't. No, you can't. No, you can just make your. She's your commander. Oh no, she's not. She's legendary. not legendary. No. All right. So, scratch everything I just. So said. it'd be. It, I think with uh, you're talking about Soulfire Grandmaster. Yeah. Right. So it's white colorless, and then there's two red blue hybrids mm-hmm. in there. I think that'd be really neat to be able to put that in a white, white. red deck or a white blue deck. Probably not going to be very good in a white blue deck, but could really help out for consistency reasons with red, or like white red decks. Mm-hmm. Um, if if you're going with that theme or angle, so I think that would be really cool to be able to do something like that. Yeah, um, I agree. I would. I'm just trying to think of other cards that you could use in there, but like if and again, well, because you could go back to the mythic cycle that they had there, and I believe it was Fate Reforged, and they all have you know, it, there's butcher horde butcher something black and then it's red white and then it'd be cool if you could put that in a red a a black red deck or a black white deck so that cycle the mythic cycle from that set is really kind of cool um and it'd be nice if it didn't have to be three colors yeah so three colors are just so much harder to use even in that in those colors the fact that it's giving you the option of you can tap either red or blue for this option you know like it's already given you the Hey, this can be one or the other. <clears throat> yeah. um, I think we're both in agreement that this. I think we would want to get changed. If possible. I think it'd be cool. Yeah, I think it'd be really. It cool. doesn't hurt the game at all. I think it just adds more options, like you were saying there. Mm-hmm. All right, the second one is no max deck size. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what I thought. Too. It was like <laughs> we hang out too much, probably. Uh, commander or hundred cards. It's that's just the game. That, it's a very and I think, think of shuffling. A hundred cards is already <laughs> fucking tough to shuffle, especially if they're double sleeve. It's already like yeah, I have to fit oh, three hands around this fucking thing. Like, need, they'd have to come up with the contraptions that shuffle your deck for you. Yeah, the, the dealer cards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everybody just has set that it their in there. Own. <laughs> That'd be actually hey. kind of cool. <laughs> that would be sweet. That'd be kind of cool. You just put it in the shuffler, but All man, right. I'd be worried. Never mind. About- we just change our minds. We are four <laughs> no max decks. <laughs> But I would be worried about that machine like ripping up one of your cards. Luckily, you play with I wouldn't like that. Yeah. Things are proxies that are expensive, but other players would be like, "Oh yeah, my uh, freaking I don't know underground sea just got <clears throat> tore up on this damn machine." Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I also think that it would um, allow for sloppy deck building because like people get into it. I don't want to cut anything, so I'm not going to cut anything. Yeah. That's how I see it happening. Yeah, and then your deck just is worse. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think having a hundred card size deck is nice because it forces you 
to have you got to fit within those restraints and i think that's a good thing. yeah for sure um i mean seriously if there if, if there was nothing i still would try to do 100 yeah. your brother justin have, would have a 400 card <laughs> yeah, deck exactly i don't know what to cut so i'm going to use all Everything. of my cards yeah no the fact of what you just said there is having to fit that into a hundred card deck. That's part of the challenge. And the fun part of making a deck is you got to figure out, okay, what stuff do I need in this deck? What should I cut out to that? will still make this deck work out. If mm-hmm. you just had no limit to that, I might've go, Oh, uh, I'll, I'll just make this 150 card deck and then I'll fit everything in there. Everything that I want. And yeah. then you're just never going to see the cards that you want. Yeah. I think the hundred is a perfect, and it's a nice round number, as you yeah. know, <laughs> I like round numbers, round even numbers. All right, next one is Soul Ring Ban. We kind of had a discussion yeah, on we, this we already. We talked about this. You can go back to our episode on that, talking about that. Overall, I could see either way going. I don't with have it, a problem with it. But it's 100 cards. You're not going to see it very often. We see it more often than not. Yeah. But our uh, friends cheat. I think I also in that, what'd you say? I said our friends cheat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I also mentioned in that Soul Ring episode, Command Zone did a episode on statistics of certain things and soul ring was one of them turn one soul ring that person actually ends up losing the game more often than they yeah. win the game because everybody targets that person um so anyways just come out strong i you know you know it's it's not something that i would care to have change because soul ring is a pillar of it's an every single commander deck yeah so the be it's a pillar of commander yeah and it's easy to get and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, non creature legendary rule. So you take away that your commander has to be a creature legendary or those planeswalkers that say this can be your, your so commander. anything legendary, legendary, anything legendary. Um, eh. I, we've talked about that one too. We talked about an episode where we talked about using our planeswalkers as well. Planeswalkers is one of the rules here. So like I would, when, when you're opening up to any legendary being able to be a commander, you start going like artifacts and guys cradle. Yeah. I was gonna like say just land. have that be your yeah. commander. Just like Jesus, that, that could be, I would say really, no to really this. Powerful. And then I'm, I, we both kind of <laughs> agreed that we liked the planeswalker For part sure. of, yeah. I think this is probably too much mm-hmm. openness. But opening up to Planeswalkers being your general, I like that. Ban the certain ones that are broken and then, you know, let... I feel like that's more of what... Are we talking about Planeswalkers Yeah, we'll, we'll right just now? move that's... it both into the same one. Because I... Okay. I How it was written on there, he had them scrunched together, so I actually thought it was oh. part of the same. So I think, I think Planeswalkers would be fine and interesting mm. and cool. And like, yeah, you, you have those couple that could be really big problems. And you just get rid of those. I think you get rid of those and it's fine. And you just say those. Like you, you would general. get rid of like Narset, Parter of Veils. Yeah. Soren. Maybe Liliana of the Veil. Maybe. maybe. But again, <coughs> you're dealing with four people. Yeah. Yeah. Narset would suck. Yeah. So but the other part of it, like the downfall of having a planeswalker as your commander is it doesn't do damage. You can't kill somebody with commander damage. Yeah. So if you have a player that's out of control and has infinite life, well, you can't do anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, next is no commander damage. Speaking of, Oh wow. Did yeah, you plan good, that? No, I didn't. I looked down. I was like, Oh, <laughs> commander damage. The next one. So removing the commander damage. Um, I don't like that. I, okay, so I've, Josh Lee Kwai is kind of, he's, you know, the command zone. Yeah. He's uh, kind of a proponent of this, and he is on the rules committee for yep. for commander. No, not the rules committee. He's on the commander advisory board. Right. Different. Yeah. Um, and so that's something that he kind of pushes. And from my memory, the one that probably worked the most for me was it's hard to explain to newer players, and it doesn't happen Almost ever in his experience. Yeah. uh, But my argument with that, and I've said it before, I think we've talked, this is one topic we've talked about before is, and my example of the last point there is sometimes a player might have infinite life. And if they have infinite life, you have no way of killing that person. Yep. You have commander damage. You always have a way to kill somebody with your commander. Even if your commander is only doing one damage. If let's you, say if that you player can control the board and they're let's say that player gained infinite life and then somehow the board is wiped. They can't cast anything. They don't have anything, but you have a one, one creature and it's your commander. You, you can still kill them with yeah. that. Even if they have infinite life, that sounds so, like an awful game, but yeah. <laughs> not <laughs> but one that I want to be in. There's still that op- option that that person can die for infinite. And we don't like playing infinite, but some people do. Yeah. Have there, that. Are, there are plenty of people that do that. Uh, 
and there's nothing against that if you do that, but this gives, no, there's a lot against you. (laughs) You just can't play with us, (laughs) (laughs) but you just give that option that there's another way to win the game. It doesn't just have to be, you get them down to zero. I like it. I don't, don't want to change that one. Yeah. I also, if you get rid of that, Voltron decks become less powerful, Mm -hmm. even though like, even though they're really kind of hard to build with, but like Shu Yun doesn't work. Uh, you're all the mist stalker Rafik, the many you lose a lot of powerful cards for sure. If you kill it and really they're not, I mean, they're probably competitive, but there there's easier ways to deal with them. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Uh, next one is fourth player advantage. So we kind of talked about this a little bit before. I think this is could have some interesting things you could do here. Um, and what they're talking about is like the person that has the fourth turn. The last person. They're at a very big disadvantage. Sure. And the example that we use was like in fantasy football, you do a snake draft. Mm-hmm. And so first has the most powerful pick out of your fantasy draft. Mm-hmm. Last person is, you know, 12, 12th. But best. then they get to pick two. So they get a two little, in a row. Two in so, a row. Yeah, they so get it gives it that balance. And that could be really nice to figure out some type of balance for a fourth, the fourth player. You had said when we were talking before we're doing the snake thing with that. I was yeah. like, no, that gets so fucking confusing going back and forth. Fourth player gets a second <laughs> turn, then it goes back. Yeah. That I think, yeah, I don't think that would. Uh, but some interesting things you also said was maybe doing the monarch add that person as. Yeah, I think they could that'd be, cool. be really cool because then they all automatically are going to get an extra draw that that first mm-hmm. turnaround, and then maybe by most likely by two or three turns, they're going to have the first yeah, draw. Yeah, because like I've, extra I've, draw. I've heard of people putting in Monarch for whoever draws first blood. Mm-hmm. So like whoever gets to attack and deals damage first, they get to be Monarch. Mm-hmm. But more than likely, that's player one or two. Yeah. And so they, they're already at that advantage, and then they get more of an advantage. So I don't like that part to whereas just giving it to the fourth player could be an advantage. I haven't, you know... I think that'd be an interesting thing for command zone to go through their notes and go, how many times did the fourth player win? Yeah, that's a good point because they have the info. So like if they could figure that out and they go, well, actually they lose like, you know, they, they lose and they only have like a 10% hit rate or win rate. You're just like, well, that is a pretty big disadvantage. And when Larry quotes that from command zone, what they did is they actually took not just from their cast. They took from like goldfish. They took all the big content creators. I think there was four or five of them and did all the games and did the calculations there. That was over 300 games that they did. Was it something like that? Yeah. Uh, And then we should maybe test that out. Do the, the Monarch thing today. When we go to bill from Woodbury's (laughs) house, we're going to bill's house today to play some commander after this. But yeah, I, I think that would be an interesting way. Is there not any other things you could think of? They draw two cards to start the the game instead of one. So they just get one extra draw? Yeah. Or they get to scry uh, two cards to start the game? I don't think that'd be enough. Yeah, I don't know. Or get an extra land drop on the first turn? I think <laughs> only on the first turn. That could be really interesting. Yeah. I like that. Play a spell for free. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> is that too much? Probably too much. Just play all huge cards. Blight, <laughs> Steel, Colossus. I win the game. <laughs> Turn one. Uh, but yeah, that's something that we, we should fart around with a little bit. And it could be really interesting. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next one is, we've talked about this one, this topic as well. Poison total damage. Yeah. I, I don't think I realized that we talked or had, had at least a little. Yeah. Poison total challenge. Uh, I... Don't care anymore. You don't care anymore? You've, you've been changed? I'm fine with 10. Yeah. Well, we had a good discussion about that. Yeah. And I've heard some other discussions saying kind of the similar things. Poison, Larry doesn't like poison as much, but the what ends up happening more often than not, if somebody's a poison deck, they're going at, they have to take out one person at a time. Yeah. They're not, if you're taking everybody out at the same time, then it's I fine. don't have any, yeah, yeah I don't, I still over. don't like it, but you're at least ending, ending the, the game. game. But if you're taking one person out at a time, what ends up happening is the board goes, holy shit, poison, kill that person. And in that, in the meantime, those people aren't being damaged by actual damage yeah. there. And, and so it didn't progress the game at all. If that person, the poison player loses before killing anybody, mm. because poison just goes away essentially. Or you knock out one guy and poison player is kind of useless because they used all the resources. Yeah. So um, poisons, it, it doesn't, I don't think has enough um, it's resources to make that a continuous 
threat. Yeah, yeah. The the biggest threat that happens is one of the cards I talked about in my fave fives. It is Triumph of the Hordes. Yep. But that's a game ender. That's your that's a game ender. Creator yeah. of Behemoth. Or, or your... again, if you're giving Nekusar um, poison and you're just hitting everybody for a wheel, mm. that again you're lo- you're you're ending the game mm. for everybody. And we're both in it... agreement on <clears throat> poison needs to be in there. Like that's another. Same thing as commander damage. It's another way to kill somebody. Yep. I like that there's multiple ways that you can die in this game. Mm-hmm. I can understand how somebody, a new person might get confused. Like, wait, I can die from going to zero? Okay, I get it. Oh, and if this commander does this? Oh, man. And from poison? But, I mean, once you get it. here, like, Here's the question, though. is like, If, if there's a poison player and a mill player, <laughs> like those, like those, they're relatively similar. Mm-hmm. And I think I don't have a problem with mill. Nope. So I probably shouldn't have a problem with poison. Oh, that's where come I'm around. At. Wait, applause. <laughs> He's checking. He's like, is that the right button? Yeah, that was the right button. <laughs> <laughs> we got him. We got him. Moving All right. on. <laughs> tuck rule. Uh, this took me a second. I was like, oh, is the tuck? Oh, what that it's, is is if you're tucking, your commander, if yeah. you're tucking, <laughs> tuck dance. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh puts the lotion <laughs> in its on its skin or gets a hose again. Jesus. Uh, all right. So what that is is if your commander dies, what they used to be able to do not die. What you used to be able to do is like shuffle it into you. Like uh, there, there were cards that chaos warp. Yeah, that example. would shuffle a commander into the library and as- effectively get rid of somebody's commander for but the rest of the game. Changed it so that if your commander is moving from zone to zone, even if you put it in your hand and then you're discarding, it's now moving to a different zone. At that point, you can move it into your command yeah. zone. Um, I like that rule that you have the option. I don't like being that it gets shuffled away. You know, mm-hmm. that's so a lot of times that's just then you're done. If your commander is gone and there's yeah. no way you can get it back. I it, think adding that tax each time it dies helps out. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. What do you think with the... So for tucking, if I'm remembering right, I remember they changed the rule. They changed a bunch of commander rules right around Theros, the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, and tuck rule, they, they got rid of it. And I remember their reasoning was that people like to play with their commanders. And if you right. take them out and there's a consistent enough ability to do it, you know, there's hinder. There's a lot of cards that kind of can tuck. Then that's making the game unfun. Yeah. And, and I think... They had a really good point, so I would leave it as is. Yeah, I agree. Uh, let's see, wish boards. Um, it's kind of like your sideboard in this. Is I would say see no max deck size. <laughs> conversation <laughs> we had five minutes ago. Yeah. It it's basically having cards outside the game and cards that can go get those cards outside the game. Yeah. So I don't I don't like that. It's plan for it or the only only problem I will say is the. Is it Sponshire, Ulamog, dude? The one that you can go get every, El- <laughs> every Eldrazi, Eldrazi outside the game or whatever. That one, I'm like, oh, it's completely useless. I think you could still come into it and go, hey, if I go off with this card, can I just say I win the game? Yeah. And everybody goes, sure. If you can pay 10 and 10 mm. and get everything and not get wrath by the next 20, turn. it's isn't it, to do it? It's something ridiculous. Yeah. But it's like takes 10 or 11 to come out. You got to... It's it's a lot of mana, and so I'm like, if you could do it, I don't. And it's not wrath by the time you can attack. Yeah, the I next think turn. when I used to play with that card, that's what I was like, okay, guys, I'm not gonna have these cards with me, but if I get this, I have all these guys. I, I would I would give somebody the win if they just did that. Yeah. Um. So. All right. Uh, change Mulligan rule, which we already kind of have. We, changed we already do. This, which I think is a really really good change. The drawing ten cards, and then putting three of them on the bottom of your library. Yeah. I think it adds consistency. You're able to get three to four land pretty, and like that's what you want. And uh, what's his name from uh, Twitter? Shivam. Yeah, Shivam brought it up, and you actually said, "Hey, this is what our group does." And there was a lot of people that are like, "Oh, I like this. I like this." They yeah, liked yeah. the idea of that. It's um, I, I like it a lot better because again, when the games are long, so if you start out shitty, like the game's just gonna kind of be shitty. Yeah, for unless you. you're. You're so on, I have to win. I don't care if that... Per- I like when people are playing, when we have interaction. I don't yep. want somebody... It sucks when somebody's not coming out yep. and they're just sitting there. They're not They're four. not affecting the board and nobody wants to deal with yeah. them. It's. I like fun games. Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, I, don't, you play? I mean, I'd, I'd rather play I'd, a fun game than win. I don't have any problem with, you know, you don't like your... 
or seven, just, you know, shuffle it yeah. back in, draw another seven until you get a hand that's comparable. Yeah, that's what but we do. But 10 well. saves you time. Oh, yeah. We've only, out of the times that we've played with the 10 card mulligan rule, I probably take one mulligan <clears throat> or two mulligans a night at the most. Where mm-hmm. A game. Yeah. Not it's a so game. so annoying. No, Everybody else is game. good. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I played, I think, what did I figure? I was like 10, 10 or 12 games last time and only had one mulligan. So yeah, I uh, think that it just, yeah, it makes things smooth. All right. Uh, next one is no change. I think that's probably the most appropriate <laughs> yeah. for, for official rules. Right. I think commander's in a really good spot right now. Uh, that was pretty easy. Move into life total change. I don't think it needs no, any change. I don't think so either. I think it's at a good spot. Mm-hmm. Planeswalkers as commanders. Oh, I did write down Planeswalkers as commanders. Yeah. So we already talked about that. Uh, change to partner tax. Is, so I think that what that's <clears throat> indicating is that if one of your partners dies, they both, both of get them taxed. Cost two. Uh, I don't like that. I don't either. <laughs> We're burning through these pretty quick. Yeah, it's yeah. like, ah, no. Uh, I don't like that change. I like being able to, I like, that's the unique thing about partners is that each one is different. I mean, they each have a different commander damage. So if you're going to mm-hmm. do that, then do they count as one for commander damage? You mm-hmm. know, that's probably the only way I would change it. Then I would say that both of their damage is combined instead of, but, but then you, but you're working really hard at that point. Yeah. Like, uh, commander what did I have? dies, triggers, die triggers. I like this. So that it actually triggers going to the graveyard is what Yeah. So like Omnath, Locus of Rage, whenever an elemental you control goes to the graveyard or itself, it deals three damage to any target. Mm hmm. But Omnath doesn't go to the graveyard. Doesn't go to the graveyard, so that doesn't trigger. So, like, I could see this. I, I would like it a lot more because that's how um, those cards are supposed to work. Mm-hmm. And but because of that strange commander well, there's, rule, there's the um, <clears throat> isn't it the vampire that does the very similar white black vampire that from has, uh, Rivals of Ixalan? Yeah, yeah exactly. you need her to go into your graveyard to get the one one vampires, right? Isn't that mm-hmm. what it does? Yeah. Well, if it's your commander, you're never going to use that as your commander. So you have it do one time and let it be there and then hope that you have some type of recursion. Back. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a good, a good I, point. I think it'd be really cool. And that's how I thought it was. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's – so I, I think it'd be a simple rule change is um, very similar to, like, tokens when they hit the graveyard. Like, they hit the graveyard and then they cease to exist – or like if a card that your commander is changing a zone, you can say it went to that zone and then you choose, does it go to the commander zone? Yeah. So like um, there are cards that say whenever a card is um, like returned to your hand, you got to discard a card. Like that effect would still take place, but then you could also say my commander is going to the command zone. Yeah. And I guess that's how I would uh, amend it is like, because you don't want cards that say, oh, you know, there's, what is it? Um the, the graveyard hate cards that when a card goes to the graveyard, instead exile it. Mm-hmm. You don't want that to happen to your commander. So you're just saying that basically you, you make an amendment saying that it's going to the graveyard, but it's not affected by anything that like would get rid of it because then it's going to your commander. Because it's zone. already doing that. But yeah. I guess if it did get removed going to exile, that's going from a, di- different, a different zone, zone so, so then you, you could, could put it, it to exile. So if there's like Ley Line of the Void, whatever thing goes to your graveyard never actually hits the graveyard. Mm-hmm. That would take effect. That would ley line of the void would still supersede any graveyard hate, like or yeah. any hits. So, um, but then again, just talk it, their way out of it is it would go there and then it's like nope, it's going to exile. Well, now it's changing zones. Now you can choose to still go to your command. It. Yeah. Zone, so. so I think I think it'd be a good I think it'd be a good thing for the game if commanders actually hit the graveyard or change zones and were recognized as cha- changing zones, mm-hmm. and then you can choose. Yeah. I think. I think that'd be a simple rule change. And then the last thing is adding silver border cards that I'm like, those are fun. Some of them are fun. Some of them are interesting, but I kind of like that. Those just stay silver border, you know, cause there's some crazy stuff that can be with that, but there are some cool things like the, from the unstable stuff where you're adding the, the creatures together, combining, making yeah. a snake bunny or whatever, like all the different combinations. But I think that's more of like a, fun different thing to do i think it'd be more like specific cards can be yeah because there would be a lot Uh, of big ban list for yeah yeah it'd be huge and then you'd have to it'd be like its own separate ban list of Mm -hmm. like 
silver border cards, these are the ones that you can play. Yeah, I think that's more of what it would be. It's just like, yeah, here's 10 cards that silver <laughs> border you can play with. Everything else is banned. No, yeah, I mean, like, there's booster tutor. Like, you can go and uh, get a, a booster and then shuffle it into your library. Like, yeah. that's stupid. Yeah. Like, you can't, like, you just can't do something like that. Or things that, like, I think there's stuff with playing on words. <sighs> if you, you know, you can't. I don't know. There's so many things. That Protection it, it from like an a, artist. It feels like it's a drinking game at that point. <laughs> certain things. And I think, again, I think if you have a play group that's steady and it's like, sure, we can all play with these sil- uh, silver bordered cards. Um, can I, can I tell a, a quick story? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw it from Twitter, but um, so I did post, uh, I do cheaty face. That'd be the like one silver border card where it's like, if you can cheat this onto the board and you're not caught <laughs> right away, you get, you get to keep it on board. And it's just like a two, two flyer yeah. or whatever the fuck. Uh, and then somebody posted a story underneath and I did it, not read this. I saw you post yeah. that, but I did not read this. So part. the, the story is that a guy, uh, this group of friends, they made a no ban list commander night. Everything goes mm-hmm. any card that magic has ever printed. And so they're in the middle of this game. Uh, they're both trying to combo off. And this one player just is kind of slowly putting uh, permanence out and just counterspelling every other spell that these guys are doing literally doing nothing and everybody's like what the fuck is happening and near near the end of the game the guy wraths the board everything is destroyed other than uh essentially lands and then he proceeds to flip all of his lands um because they're all proxied so he slides the lands out and they're all cheaty faces (laughs) And he kills them on sight. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. they're like, that was amazing. That's, that's a great way to do it. It was super funny. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> but so he used them as lands to get everything that he was doing, <laughs> casting and all that stuff, you know, countering and killing yep. the board. And then when it came to it, oh, that's brilliant. I like that a lot. Because the other guys were just doing degenerate stuff like turn two winning. Oh, now I'm going to counterspell. Mm. And so it was really, it was a fun story to, to listen to. That's pretty awesome. Or not listen to, but read. Read, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think that's it. for. I think this is a pretty interesting list. There's probably a handful that we thought could probably stay in, you know, that would be kind of a cool rule change that if that did happen. But um, for the most part, we like where Commander's at. I think that's a general thought. Yeah. But with your play group, test some of these out. I'd like to hear if you guys change anything, if you do anything different with these rules, or if now you're going to test this out and let us know how it goes, because I'd mm-hmm. be interested to see how they work out. <laughs> All right, then we move into our last segment. It's amazing. That's too long. Yeah, it was, it was, <laughs> if I could shut it, cut it like two well, seconds. Well, I, I could press the button and press it again, and I'll stop it. So I could do that. <laughs> Uh, I love toys. these buttons. All right, so it's oh, what I will add in is like our little sounders for Smith Specs of the Week. Oh, we could oh, we I can do add that now in there instead yeah. of just like just sitting here for a second. Yeah, <laughs> well, we'll still sit here for a second, but yeah. All right, so this is it's just more of um, actually Besh uh, on Twitter and at Rummix brought this up for Dollar to Duels. There's a mm-hmm. couple cards. Uh, it started with. At Rummix uh, tweeted this out, and he was saying, actually emailed us as well. He's like, hey, guys, love. we have, He's a patron as well, so he got proxies. He's like, thanks for the proxies, blah, blah, blah. How about this as a spec for dollar to duels? And it was uh, Bolus's Citadel, the mm-hmm. the the promo, promo foil. foil, which is a different art. And actually, Larry and I had talked about that one before. That is one card I had bought back in November because of that, that same idea for a dollar to dual thing. And I think that's actually a really good card, a really good spec because there's a lot of things that go into it. They're a buck 60, 75 is what I was getting for. So mm-hmm. little amendment to the dollar to duels. It still has a dollar in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean like it's, it's going to be hard however you guys are going. So yeah. Well, so I have been doing that where cards that were under about two bucks. I have, I think one card that was like two Oh six. <gasps> that does not count. <laughs> $2 to do For the duels. most part, I'm saying a dollar, a dollar is in the, the thing. Go ahead and use that. Uh, the crazy thing about bolus of Citadel is not only is it a freaking sweet card, but it's already an 8,000 EDH. Yeah. Decks. Yep. Now that's a spring set and getting over to five or 3,000, at this point would be a lot, but it's already at 8,000 EDH rec decks. And 
That's and that's for sure like an indicator of what you want to look at and just going. This has a lot of potential to go up, mm. as you said. Like the alternate art is kind of important because that's not you know there's less choices for right. that. The foil counts, um, and so I, I think there's a lot of indicators for that one to be able to just get a, a, a nice increase. Now with both of these cards, so Besh has Besh has a similar card. It's Karn's Bastion. Yep. Um, that one's in seven thousand EDH rec decks, and again, it has a promo foil it's a different art uh and you can get those for a buck buck 25 right now now that's just a great and he made the point and it's a great point i've heard it uh, people say this too is and i agree with it is that it's it comes in it's a land and it's our it's like our last uh episode it has another utility to it so it's mm-hmm. your utility land proliferate is a really good ability it's not just giving goes in a ton of decks yeah, it can potentially go your planeswalker decks go into your one one counter decks go in your minus one minus one counter go in your it's poison decks look at it very similar to atraxa mm-hmm. you know that should that just kind of goes into atraxa which is the most played commander and then everything that you just mentioned yeah and i think it's a much better card than I feel like populate needs to be a better mechanic where it's more than just one creature. And that's if you hit all the creatures, that's yeah, insane. Then yeah. Then you're, it would be, but that's double your arm rate is, is eh. it's you're hitting whatever you want and you get to pick On the board, and choose. Yeah. I'm surprised that it, it is the whole board and not just you. Yeah. Like you're affecting other people's stuff too. So yeah, you can even give people poison counters that you didn't give them poison yeah. counters. You're like, Oh, well, or I'll energy deck yeah. or, you know, like there, there's a lot of stuff. And again, it's, colorless too so it can go in every deck yeah. that's a big thing like with bolus of citadel that goes into black probably decks. every mono black deck yeah, and maybe a, a two color deck and i mean you probably just fit it in there because it's so good and powerful mm-hmm. but it again it has to be in a black colored deck and uh, like this again, can be in any deck it was also in um war of the spark and yep. Spring set, 7,000 EDH rec decks. It's a huge number for a spring set, just like the 8,000. Um, the the, those downfall, are like the two of the three top cards used from War of the Spark. Those two, and then it's like Narset, Part of the Veils. Yeah. Well, and the thing, the one downfall I'll say with um, Karns is there's four foil printings. So you have the promo foil, the foil, the pre-release foil, and then they have the commander deck foils. Which Besh made a point. He was saying not a lot of people like that. I I don't mind the little planeswalker, planeswalker symbol. symbol. I actually kind of like that and it being foil kind of nice. But those, I was on TCG. There isn't many copies of those, and those are actually the most expensive out of mm-hmm. the batch of them. So that one, I think there's only eight vendors on there that even have them. The other ones, there's still a lot of inventory in both of these. So it's not like, hey, these are going tomorrow. But Let's see what happens with the set, especially uh, Remix made a, a point on Bolus' Citadel. It has those three cast, you know, three black. Well, we're starting to get into uh, Theros. Theros where your devotion matters. And, oh, that's actually what we were supposed to do. Is yeah, we were supposed spoilers. to lead in with that. Shit, okay. I forgot about that. Well, let's talk about that really quick. Yeah, we can but, do that. So your devotion matters getting <coughs> into the gods. The gods, if you guys remember the last time we were in Theros, all the gods have a devotion to make them turn into a creature. And mm-hmm. it looks like they're continuing that here. Uh, I should actually, because we did up. have the bio box promo is going to end up being, why am I? Athreos. Yep. Uh, which is black, white four colorless. And then if your devotion is to, you know, it'll be a creature if your devotion is proper. Again. And, uh, so it's a four, seven indestructible still. And your devotion has to be uh, seven or more with black and white. And then at the beginning of your end step, put a coin counter on another target creature. Whenever a creature with a coin counter on it dies, you put it on... It dies or exiles. Or exiles. Return it to the battlefield under your control. So that's, uh, that's a pretty sweet That is promo. the buy a box promo, which seems really, really cool. Uh, it feels kind of slow. Yeah, but again, six. it's it's hard to get rid of, so it's kind of just going to be around. Um, <clears throat> so again, Bolus's Citadel would work well with this because it's already given you three. Yeah, and you have this that's five, and you just need something else out, oh, and it gives you your devotion right there. It, yeah this this card seems really cool too. So yeah, so we know that devotion is going to be a thing. Um, looking into Ravnica, you have the hybrid symbols. Uh, some of those better cards might really play well with Theros. So in if you're doing specking, 
check out those cards from the Ravnica sets to see some of the better stuff that's just going to fit with Devotion because that is a, a powerful mechanic. Uh, a couple of the things can be. that have been going up, and I think and I one of them I picked up for my Dollar to Duels is one of my ones that I sold already, but the Cavaliers. And we kind of figured from that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah, from M20. They kind of figured, okay, they're... They're bringing the gods back because they, you know, these have all three drop, you know, three casting in there, you know, three devotion symbols yep. in there. Uh, but Cavalier Gales and Flame are the two that we've always liked those two, the one of the most when we initially previewed of fl- those. Of Flame, yeah. Or Flame, sure. what did I say? Gales. Gales and Flame. Gales well, was Gales like the flame. worst one, I think. White white and blue were worse than. I like the the blue one, actually. It's not too bad. Because I you bought did. it. You did, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you you want to check out those uh, for specking wise. I mean, they've already those two have gone up on are on the rise right now. Uh, Flame has gone up to I think it's eight bucks is what we were looking at, yeah. and Gales is up to six dollars. Uh, but let's talk about one other thing that was spoiled in this. We're gonna talk about uh, Planeswalker Ashiok that was spoiled. Nightmare Muse. Oh, now we gotta enlarge in this so we can actually. Sorry, read it. <laughs> All right. So it's three blue and a black. Do you want to read what it does? It uh, to- starts with five loyalty. You can plus one it to create a two, three blue and black nightmare creature. And when it attacks, they uh, the exile. Whenever this creature, creature attacks, attacks or, blocks, or blocks, each opponent exiles the top two cards of their library. You can minus three. You got the arrow over it. Sorry. <laughs> uh, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Uh, and then any player, or and then, then that, that player, player exiles, a, exiles a card from their hand. Oh yeah, it is exile. And then you can minus seven. You may cast up to three face up cards your opponents own from exile without paying their mana cost. That's interesting. And I they, can dig it. They also have the full art. So we're we're getting that we knew that was kind of happening, but we're getting the masterpieces again, kind of thing. The um, collector packs and everything. So oh, they have both yeah. the Ashiok and uh, what is it? Elspeth. Elspeth has the full art trailer came out. I'll tag that. Oh, I'll yeah. put that in the notes. That was an interesting trailer. Kind of creepy. Did you get scared, Lowry? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> they also, the other trailer then uh, Trombley pointed that out is they did a trailer for at pretty much the same exact day. Uh, the MMO magic MMO that's coming out too. So, isn't the draftable commander product legends? Isn't that called legends? I don't know. I'm a commander player. I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. All right. I think that's all we have. Uh, and yeah. then we know that enchantments are still going to be a thing yeah. on Theros. So if you're looking to speculate, look through standard of, or anything I, that I have on my list, the hall of Heliod's. Yeah. Generosity. That's a, then that, that, that won't go crazy with, Standard because it's not in standard. No, but it'd be modern but, potential or commander. You know, I, or commander, that card. Yeah, yeah. It's just one that I'm going to continuously pick up for the next year or so because it's cheap. It's going to be yeah. You it's only it like for, three bucks right yeah. now. So, all right, I think that's it for our episode. Right, we made it through with uh, the new equipment. Yeah, thank you I, guys. I think that's Again, it. I didn't get to use as many buttons because we both need to get headphones. You used plenty of buttons. <laughs> I'll program more, and then I'll put it labeled there, Larry, so we both can hit buttons at the same time. <laughs> just, yes, I just want to trumpet. Oh, oh good, good for, for you. you! Just have to finish with that. I love this thing. Thank you guys again. But uh, I think next week we might be double casting. Yeah, we got Christmas Maybe. stuff. Yeah, we got Christmas stuff. So, all right, we will catch you guys later. Thanks for listening. See ya. Bye.